Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a new case from Fractal. Now, uh, they made, you may know rather, that's the word I was looking for, you may know that they released the Define S last year. Quite an open plan ATX case, I'd like to call it. Well, essentially what they've done with the Nano S, which is what we're going to be looking at today, is they've taken it down into an ITX form factor but kept all of the larger uh, ATX style componentry. So it's ITX motherboard, but with uh, like ATX power supply, for example, rather than going SFX and keep things small. So what we're gonna do is I'm not gonna waste any more of your time other than to say 54.99 right from the very start. That's either gonna make you happy or sad. The 65 quid ITX case Oh, Tom, what a lovely angle you get on this case, where it is quite compact. I know for an ITX case it's rather big, but for cases in general, it's actually quite compact. Now, we do have 340 millimetres or 34 centimetres tall, and then we are looking at 204 millimetres wide, and then we're looking at 401 just millimeters long now the reason why i've uh, given you all the details of the height width and all that type of stuff very early on is where it's an itx case some people will be very very conscious about the size and can it fit in the gap i've got here or will it go underneath my shelf so you've got the details there and then you can straight away from the get-go work out whether this is right for you or not on the top front We've got a headphone microphone reset switch, power switch. You've got a little LED light there. And then you've got two USB 3s. I know Rick on the forums or Pharonix, one of the moderators, is going to be like, Dom, 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 I need these. I need these. Well, uh, you can keep your eyes off. Right. Uh, on the roof. Now, normally the roof would have had the cover on it, but I've taken it off to, for something to show you later on. But this does just clip down and it does have sound deadening foam on the back of this as well. It does clip really nicely into place and it gives you a nice smooth, it all does sit in level. But if I push this down now, I'm gonna have to pop it back off again. But what we can see from this angle, we will talk about it again in more depth, is an offset uh, set of grills and up here you can get either 240 millimeter fans or 220 millimeter fans if you would want and we will talk about uh full compatibility with aios and all that type of stuff later on but it does need a little bit more time spending on it back to our lovely front angle because really i should have done this then if i lean underneath you can see <laughs> slides all the way out and that's a full uh dust filter for the whole bottom of the case so when we do get inside, you'll know this is already there. But we can also pull the front panel off. And by pulling the front panel off, it shows us that we do have some bitumen behind the front panel, but also that with the front panel, you do have the vents on both sides, like you would expect with the R5, or more importantly, the Define S, because this is essentially a mini Define S. And then when we do get to the front panel, little uh, pull like that. There are some magnetic tabs on the uh, outside and that takes off the dust filter. Now uh, on the inside, it has got, because I've got an AIO fitted at the moment, but from standard, it would have this 140 millimeter fan fitted. So you get 140 millimeter in the front, you get 120 millimeter in the back as standard. Moving around to the uh, back side of the case, uh, I've got my cables in here and I have them uh, pulled around, but you can see up here uh, over the CPU cutout, excuse me, which can be removed if you don't want it, uh, or just to gain access, there's uh, mounts here for two solid state drives. You've also got a mount up here for a uh, normal optical drive, a normal optical drive, normal mechanical, should you want to mount something down this way as well because it would go this way and you've got the grommets in there but you can move them depending on the mounts that you've got on your mechanical drive or you could mount a solid state drive in here as well or it is removable so you could just whip it out altogether. There are two grommets here although it's quite difficult for you to be able to see because we have got quite a lot of cables going through them and there is a little angle we'll get a better view from the other side of the case. The only grommet at the bottom for the power supply is here. Again, I'll show you this in more depth in a moment, but it is kind of covered up on the other side. There is 
here a cutout that you can use uh, if you've got an audio cable to go through but there isn't anything actually down on the other side of the motherboard again I'll show you in a moment uh, there are two grommets at the top so there's nice amount of rooms there if you did want to put fan cables through or your uh, eight pin should you need to so the top's pretty well covered the sides pretty well covered PSU not so much there's no grommets uh, here like big grommets here at all again I will show you in more depth on the other side just to let you know where we are we're at the back of the case looking down into the offset mounts and I did say that I wanted to uh, cover this in a little bit more depth but I do need to bring you in so that we can get a, a much better view of things now I do have the Asus impact fitted it's the z170 impact and i'm not sure whether you know but it does have a riser card on the top of the card here and this is what this is here and there's no real way that i can show you in to make it particularly easy it is there and there we go and it stands up from the card it's from the board now so when we have it zoomed in like this you can see that it, it stands out now uh Basically, this is offset so that you can uh, fit fans, more importantly, radiators in. So if you wanted to fit uh, normal water cooling radiators in, or if you wanted to, you could fit an AIO in, H100i GTX, the Fractal Kelvin, whatever, doesn't particularly matter. So what I've actually done here is I've got two fans and I'm holding them in with screws, A, to show you where the screw heads are, but also the fact that it helps me hold two fans together. And you may think to yourself, why are you holding two fans together? One is to signify a fan, and the other one is to signify a radiator. It's just a really easy way for me to show you AIO and then a fan. An AIO would normally actually end up being a couple of millimeters bigger, uh, but it's just a really nice, simple way of me being able to show you something. Now, if I'm putting this in here, and I push it right alongside. Now that's now, the bottom fan is now up against the riser card on the um, uh, impact. But what you can see is that the head of the screw, the absolute middle of it, is smack bang in the middle of that um, little, uh, uh, so that's where you cut out, that's where the fan, that's where you'd want it to go that is there and it's literally like two or three millimeters out so uh, essentially you can't fit an AIO in the roof with an impact and by that I mean any of the Asus um, ITX uh, motherboards with that riser card I've tr this is the Z170 but I have tried it with the other ones as well and you get the same problem with the um, fan not being able to touch now you may think to yourself, that can't be right Tom, and I thought that can't be right either, so I asked Fractal, and it is apparently right. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to go into it in more depth with the, in the conclusion, but apparently they didn't want to make the case any wider, and they say that they had, the impact was taken into uh, account. So essentially from this, if you have the impact fitted, then you cannot put an AIO in the roof. You can fit a single fan and put it wherever you want, but if you need the thickness because of the radiator, it doesn't matter whether your fan's on the top, on the bottom, doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter if you use thin fans either. You can't get an AIO fitted in the roof with any fans fitted whatsoever. Not a lot of point running them passive, um, but again, so you can fit fans, you just can't fit anything else in the roof, but that's only with the impact. There are obviously other ITX motherboards out there without the riser card, uh, and some would say that you don't particularly need it, uh, but it's just, uh, it's just something that I did. I wanted to stress this with this one, because if you've either got the impact or are planning on getting the impact, and you want an AIO in the roof, or you're thinking about using this for water cooling, as you might see later on, it's quite a good option for that, then uh, it's just not compatible. I'm going to go into more depth in the conclusion though, so let's move on. Window on this case uh, is very, very similar to the feel that you get with the Define S, and it's a really nice kind of bit of brand identity going on there in that it's massive. And when you consider the, how small the case is really, that's a lot of window on the side of it. And I personally really like it. Lovely quality feel to it, lovely clear glass. 
how long it'll stay not scratched you'll have to tell me but anyway so when we look on the inside you can see the little riser card that i was talking about with the impact there and it, there really is so, so little in it it's unreal uh, um, uh, anyway yeah I did say I wanted to talk about that in the conclusion so I should be quiet so we've got the impact in there and we do have the uh, ITX board it's 170 mil by 170 mil it's a nice tidy little square we do have the uh, PCR Express connector right at the very bottom standard and then a dual slot card in we have a, a GTX 980 tie fitted in this and you can see that you can get that in there nice uh, and simply what I do have here is a H105 and that's actually a 40 millimeter thick radiator there so it's a slightly thicker radiator if you were going for H100i for argument's sake it's about 30 mils so it's a little bit thinner which would mean you could get a longer graphics card in um, the fans do have to get mounted on the inside so fans and then uh, your normal radiator will say about 50 to 55 mil this is obviously a little bit bigger and you're looking at there of it being about 65 millimeters so nice thick radiator in the front still get the 980 tie in how much room have we actually got between the uh, the back of the case and where we would want to be able to get our you know our radiator in and you're looking really about 290 millimeters at the absolute outside edge you can obviously add a little bit extra in should you wish if you used a thinner rad so uh, 290 mil or 300 mil at the outside edge if you're going to have an AIO in the front now if you've not got the impact you can have the AIO in the roof and then you can obviously go right the way to the front and then you're looking at with a dual set of fans you're looking at 330 millimeters now one of the things I do want to say is if you were to want to get something like an Asus Matrix in and they are all pretty much the same length this little beast is pretty much 300 mil so if we wanted to fit this we would have to take this radiator out and probably quite comfortably we would need to uh, to make sure that it wasn't right up on the absolute tail edge we'd probably end up maybe wanting to take the an AIO out altogether it'd be very very tight possibly but again it's only really going to be a problem if you're running an impact if not put the AIO in the roof use the offset mounts and then you can go uh, uh, crazy with it would also open up the option of you being able to on the outside edge possibly get a, one of the um, a hybrid GPUs to run in here but if you did have that I'd be very conscious of the um, of the length of your hoses as you can see with our AIO here she's quite long I've ended up pushing it right down to make it look a little bit tidier now down the side the outside here you have your uh, vents for the side of the motherboard and you have one here and then you have one at the top the only other grommet to get into the back of the case is uh, around the uh, back of the power supply here now with my um, uh, PCI Express cable it's actually quite long if we were to just go straight down into the power supply you'd end up with an awful lot of cable all bunched up in the bottom so I've ended up going round the back and coming back in again to lose some of the length uh, which may sound crazy but it just means that you end up having less uh, uh, cables on display but for me to be able to do that there isn't any cable routing hole or anything over here so I've had to go round the bottom of the card there is actually up on the, the far right hand side if I move this up out of the way you can see that is my PCI Express cable that I've had to route up and round to be able to like I said lose some of the length uh, which may sound like a crazy thing but you don't really want too much of it all bunched in around here now talking about power supplies uh, I would say on the absolute outside edge 160 mil long power supply don't go any longer because you'll block the grommet at the back it's actually quite a difficult case for me to be able to show you uh, all the cables and everything around the back but there really isn't a great deal of uh, room at the back you've probably got about 10 mil after the end of your power supply which makes things uh, very tight um, so don't go any more than 160 mil long I know Fractal are producing now 150 millimeter long power supplies 
Uh, but if you've already got a power supply, as many of you will, because it's the type of thing that you buy a good one and then it goes through at least one upgrade with you. Uh, if you've got a, a power supply, be very careful with this because if it's longer than 160 mil, it will block that um, uh, grommet off and you won't be able to poke your cables through. If you're one of the people out there that have got a 180 millimeter long power supply, like some of the uh, higher wattage RMs and RMIs, sorry, RMX, RMs and RMIs, some of those are up to 180 millimeters long, they won't be able to be screwed in at all. Because of the bend in the board here, uh, they actually, you, you can hardly get them in at all. You might be able to absolutely force it in, but it's not really gonna do you any favors because uh, you're not gonna be able to poke your cables through to keep them tidy. So you do have to be very careful with power supply length on this case. At the end of the day, it is a uh, ITX case, so you're not gonna get, you know, uh, oodles and oodles of room it's not the uh, for argument's sake it's not the define r5 or anything like that so you are going to have to play it careful the other thing that they do have and i need to lean in front of the camera just to be able to give you a, a better look is down in the floor of the case you can see there that they've got a little mount i'm just going to shed some more light on the uh, subject now this is a mount that you can put um, uh, pumps and uh, so water cooling pumps and reservoirs down there if you want but as you can see with the setup that we are running uh, our power supply cables are already quite far over now we could really try and pull them over and you probably could but because of the uh, reduced height of the case it does mean that you're going to have a lot of cable lagging around um, so it's going to be very difficult to make things tidy and as I've already said to you with the cable that we've got coming out the bottom of the power supply which is just here uh, uh, if you did want to get a pump and a reservoir down here I, I'd say that you'd be limited especially with a, a GPU fitted like we have I'd say that you'd be um, struggling to get a pump down there you wouldn't be able to get a reservoir in as well when we go slightly up though these mounts um, have been designed, these slot mounts have been designed to fit a reservoir in. And that does sound amazing until you get a radiator in with the fans and you can see that you've not really, I mean you've probably lost about a third of the possible room to have been able to got that radiator, uh, that reservoir mount in. And if we were then to have put another um, uh, radiator in the roof, uh, with a set of fans as well, assuming we weren't using the impact, the uh, level that we would be looking at then would be here. And I'm doing this now just to give you an optical kind of guide that then massively reduces the amount of room you've got for that uh, reservoir. And if we come out a little bit further still, you then get to see your reservoir and your pump actually joining up. It's going to be a very difficult thing to try and do. You're going to end up with hoses going all over the place. It is incredibly tight in there. Right then guys, so this is actually the second conclusion that I filmed and I'm refilming because I did get the price wrong, as you probably noticed by some crazy editing at the beginning of the video. But I think that um, essentially I thought the price was 64.99 GBP, so 65 pounds, but it's actually 55 pounds. Now, in the grand scheme of things, a 10 pound note doesn't sound like a lot of money, but when it could be, you know, almost 20% of the price taken off of it because of my mistake, which was my mistake, I think it was worth changing things. Uh, and essentially in the original conclusion, I said silver, but because of the price drop, I'm going to let it squeeze in with the gold and only just squeeze in with the gold as well. It's kind of like, I liked the term recently that I saw in one of the video conclusions that you can't have a rusty gold tom because gold can't rust, but you could have gold plated. So it's kind of like the gold plated award. So it's kind of the one where, to be honest with you, part of me likes it enough to give it a gold, but then there's also part of me um, th that's still unsure whether I need to be a bit harsher in these things and, and give it the um, silver. So we're going to say gold plated. It's kind of, it's a proper teeter-totter. I really don't know which way to swing with it. And the reason why I really don't know which way to swing to it um, now the price has been moved to one side and I'm, I'm happier with that, but I'm going to show you something as well, is the, 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 uh, the impact side of things, but I want to save that towards the end. Um, so uh, if you're not going to be using an impact, 
you can use the board you can use the case to its full extent uh, you won't run into any problems um, you will still need to get creative if you're going to water cool where you're going to put your uh, reservoir and your pump options there that you could say are going to be you could get one of the uh, res pump cpu block combos uh, make sure you do your research on those though um, to make sure that you can see whether they're noisy and all that type of thing and are you going to be able to get enough um, fluid pumped around so you have those options available to you it will mean that you're not going to be able to run too big a radiator in the top just to make sure because your cpu box is going to be that bit bigger so again do your research make sure you uh, try and get your bases covered um, and that's really uh, it really it's a lovely i really do like the define s um, uh, the case and where they've kind of taken it and brought it smaller down i still wish they'd done a white one to be honest with you because I, like i said i really like the define s uh, and you know where it came from how it started because it's incredibly similar to my server which is a customized r5 because i really do like the fractal cases um, this one is the first one since probably the the um, the r4 that i've wavered over to be fair that's generally where i am with the fractal line so that good explained enough in the video gold only just still not 100 percent sure but it's when you mix it, the impact in that it gets a little bit confusing. So uh, one of the reasons why I do want to say that I've brought the impact up so much is they do sell an awful lot of them. Whether you agree with Asus as a brand or anything like that, take the fanboy nature aside. We're pretty sure that the impact sell more of the uh, enthusiast ITX uh, motherboards than any of the other brands. So for a major case company to decide that they don't want to support it, that doesn't really sit well with a reviewer that uh, thinks about more than what's just in front of him. When you start to think about you know everything that goes out and essentially I'm trying to be you guys in that. Um, I, I need to review these products so that I'm considering are you going to buy this board, that board, that board? What about this graphics card? What about that graphics card? These are all the things that I need to take uh, into um, consideration when doing a, a product like this or a job like this. And I think that the, the, the snub of the impact with water cooling is a bit of a mistake oversight, however you want to make it. Now, the price is now uh, in a better position. So if you're going to be using an AIO with the impact, do what I've done and just use it in the front. But, and this is the big but, and I do still think that this is valid. It was in the last inclusion. I'm going to put it in this one as well. If you are... Um, an impact uh, user or you want an impact ITX system and you want to water cool as well then sadly this case isn't for you <coughs> the Fantex one is now I don't normally do this in videos but I think because of the fact that Fractal decided that uh, the impact users and water cooling was not a focus for them. I've decided to bend the rules a little bit and bring another brand into a video. Now, I don't normally do that unless I'm literally doing face-offs. But with the, um, uh, the Fantex one, it is a little bit bigger, but uh, because it's bigger, it does make it easier to work with when it comes to water cooling. You can get 240 in the front, you can get 240 in the roof. You can, uh, it supports the impact as well. It comes in this white color, you get a lovely big window and it does come in a black with red internals as well me personally i'm already thinking about white with red internals but let's not get me started and this is 47 pounds so the uh in the, the respect with the nano brilliant if that's what you're looking for just be very careful about your motherboard choices or your cooling choices impact i'm going to go as far as to say if you're going to get the impact and you're looking at water then the nano really isn't for you and that's about as fair as i can possibly be i'm trying to give you guys advice you can totally ignore me if you want this is just based on my own experiences with uh, a big range of products and a big range of cases big thanks to overclockers for sending me this one by the way i wish i'd got one sooner anyway so nano s you know, we're going to say that it's got the gold-plated award, but I, I, I can't stress enough, Fractal, if you had have gone for that impact support, because it's such a small margin, 
there would have been no need for me to have gone looking for other cases that could have possibly have supported it. And I wouldn't have ended up with this at the end of the video. And we might have even been talking about a white badge rather than a rusty gold stroke gold plated one. So shame on you. Such a few. It was literally the amount of room that it needed for the uh, radiator and the impact. That was the amount of difference that um, was between you and getting a big upgrade and me literally shouting things from the rooftops. So as they would say, so close but yet so far. Now, I'm not gonna film this again. I'm not gonna take up any more of your time. I'm going to thank you for watching, or should I say enduring, another TTL video. I'll be back with another one for you very shortly. I am beavering away. Don't you worry. This is Tiny Tom Logan, feeling rather, rather calm today. <laughs> Out. Ding.